sorry, sir. It went, went down the wrong way. My choking like that must have made it sound a bit more startling than it really was. It couldn't. Do you realize that Anne is only 19? Yes, sir. Do you think she knows her own mind? I do, sir. There's no chance that when she's 23, you might not be her ideal of a husband. You want me to be perfectly frank, sir? I do. None whatever. And, uh, may I ask this uh, permanent ideal of a husband a few questions? Yes, of course, sir. Well, won't you? Thank you. What's your job? I haven't got one. Does that disturb you? Well, I've only just come down from university. I haven't uh, offered myself seriously yet. Somebody must want me. Until this rush for your services begins, on what do you propose to live? On my savings. How much are they? Well, you can, you can count on 50 pounds. You mean my daughter can? Where are you going to live? I don't know. You don't know? Well, I haven't got a house, if that's what you mean. That's what I did mean. Oh. Well, well, who has these days? Well, there are one or two people undercover. You laughed with Jack Bogard before. Loved the youth and gaiety of Susan Stephen. You've enjoyed the acid humor of Cecil Parker. Delighted at the charm of Eileen Hurley. Now see them mirror your own hilarious comedy of errors in the everyday story of every man. Push it as much as you can. Won't go no further than the wall, miss. You'll recognize with triumph your friends and neighbors. Miss Mainbrace, for instance. Could I possibly use your telephone? It is rather urgent. Mrs. Doyle, the chatty char, and Medlicott, the plumber. And above stairs, there is always Debenham, the estate agent of no estate and little esteem. May I ask what's happening? My husband is opening a tin. I see. Well, I'm speaking on behalf of the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth floors. And I've been asked to suggest that when next to entertain, you might notify the date so that other arrangements can be made for the evening. 